So we are all set. For anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Tammy. Hey! Um, for anybody who is at my talk on Tuesday, I did not just fly in from Philly, and I'm feeling much more composed than I was on t Tuesday when I got here and skidded in from the airport into the Platinum Room. Um, so we're going to talk about automation planning today. Automation is a topic that people ask me, as you can imagine, a bazillion questions about. And I keep a lot of it pretty close to the vest because they teach a course on it and I don't want to give away all their content that they paid for. But um, there's definitely some uh, higher level elements of that that we can look at that I think will be really helpful to you. Um, then at the end, we're going to just talk for a minute about something that isn't automations, only because I know that Damon's around here somewhere talking about reader magnets, and he's going to blow my big surprise. So I can't let him scoop me on my own stuff. <laughs> so we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. But first, we'll talk about automations. I'm just going to approach this in a slightly different way. Also, how cute is this, right? Look at my little ninja guy. i got to make some swag. I don't actually have any swag. I made that up. But um, I was like, I need some ninja notebooks, right? OK. You know you're supposed to automate your emails, right? And you'd love to just set it and forget it when it comes to email campaigns. But how? Right? Just write an email and then just write another email? What do you put in them? Do they go together? Can't you just put it all in one email? There's got to be a better way. <laughs> Anybody who didn't laugh at this, I envy you your youth. That's awesome. Everybody who did, I have two pairs of glasses. So I know you feel me. Um, this, <laughs> this, this is something that, if you go out into the wide world of internet marketing, which I definitely don't recommend, because it is gross out there, um, you will find internet marketers uh, here seen in their native habitat. <laughs> here trying to sell you a $997 course on how to sell courses. Um, they call those things pain points, right? So your pain point is, I, I can't uh, use the blender, or I don't know how to use a tray. I'm, just, I'm too stupid to sit in a chair. Those are, those are pain points for these poor souls, right? Um, so that's very sad. Your pain points are these things here. The part where everyone goes, you got to do automations. You guys should have all these automation sequences. You got to be like Tammy, and you got to have a welcome sequence, and you got to have a win back sequence, and you got to have a release sequence, and you got to have this. Nah, 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 nah. But like, how, right? Um, and yeah, to some extent, you do just write an email, and then you write another one, and then they go together in some way. I'm going to take a sip from my comically large water. It really is ridiculous. Mm. I'm parched. So yes, uh, the answer to all these questions is kind of yes, but <laughs> let's take them like one at a time. Um, I feel like I went backwards. No, I think I just wrote it backwards. Here's what I intended to do was to start at the bottom. Oh no, I was. Here's what I was gonna do. I'm not gonna anymore. I was gonna read each one of them out for you. Uh, you know how to read, so we're just going to skip. I don't know what I was thinking. We're going to skip to the part where we talk about the bottom one, and we'll go from the bottom back up. Why can't you just put it all in one email? Here's the cool part. Sometimes you can. So um, if you're a new author and you've got one book, what are you going to write like three onboarding emails about? Nothing. Your, your onboarding automation series is going to be an email that says, hey, I'm so-and-so. This is what I write. Maybe this is why I write it or you know, whatever. See you in the next email. And then you're going to just drop them into your regular campaigns because you don't have a whole lot to say. Um, another good example, here's a ninja trick for anyone who isn't doing it. This may be genre dependent. So some of you, I don't know, like manly action adventure people might not care so much. Romance, this is killer. Um, are you sending book birthday emails? So if your whatever book came out in December of 2017, 
next month, send a book birthday email. Just set it on automation. Make sure it only goes to people who have joined the list since the last time you sent the book birthday email, because nobody wants to get it every year. They're not as excited about your book birthdays as you are. And just say, this is the month that such and such came out. Here's this book that I love. Give them a little blurb. If you haven't had a chance to read this yet, you can grab it here. If you have already read it, why don't you recommend it to your friends? Happy birthday, book title. And then just set it and forget it. You never have to think about it again. Every year during its book birthday month, you're going to notice a little bump. There's just going to be a little bump, and you never had to do anything else to make it happen. It's a very cool trick. Probably genre dependent, though. I'd have to do some more testing, but I bet that it is. So sometimes you can just do whatever this automation is, and it really is just an email, and that's fine. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes you got to write an actual series of emails, a sequence, if you will. Um, and in that case, <laughs> you start asking uh, these questions again. So uh, do they go together? How do they go together? Yes, they do. <laughs> and how is actually really easy for you guys. This is another area where you're lucky not to be in like the wider world of internet marketing. Because how they go together is they go together in the same fashion that any story that you're telling goes together. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. There's a, a purpose, there's a story arc even, you could say, over whatever series of emails it is that you are sending to people. So if it is a welcome sequence, the story arc is here's who I am, here's what I write, here's some books that are like mine, here's some books you might like, maybe this is the first book I read in fantasy that I loved, you know, for a lot of people it's gonna be Tolkien. Uh, for me, I came into fantasy kind of weirdly sideways, and all of my early fantasy was like uh, women's stuff, like Mercedes Lackey and Marion Zimmer Bradley. I came in that way. You would maybe tell people that, tell them how you evolved as a writer, tell them if you maybe made a cool genre change. You see how this becomes more than one email. Then you've, you've told a story. You've made a sequence. Storytelling is all the rage in like all newsletter marketing, um, the like internet marketers who are selling things that are not books, really struggle with this, struggle with the storytelling aspect of identifying with your list and leading them through some kind of narrative that will end up with them buying your $997 course. We don't have to do that. We're already really good at telling stories, or we wouldn't be here. Um, and we're just trying to sell them a $5 ebook. So the barrier to entry it's not gigantic. It's actually not all that hard to do. Um, and of course, the side benefit is if you're really good at writing emails and telling a story in them, people will generally think, probably tells pretty good stories otherwise. So if they haven't read a lot of your stuff, it will still give them a little bit of confidence to go ahead and pick something up. I'm going to have another sip of my giant bottle of water. The bottle of sugar. Sorry, how awkward. Probably should have just gotten a, a cup. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to set it down here. I promise I won't spill it on your electronics, everybody. It's way down at the bottom. So that's how they go together. They go together just like really literally in a narrative format, a storytelling format. And that's all of them, even if that sounds crazy to you. So like um, if you're doing a release week sequence, which you can never 1 million percent automate, obviously, because you're not releasing the same book every time. But man, you can come really close. <laughs> you can really, like, if you're not sending pretty much the same series of emails every time you launch, I'd be surprised. So maybe just have all of those emails composed and ready to go, and you just have to go in and swap out the names, swap out the book covers. Spruce them up a little bit, just in case someone's paying attention, but they're probably not <laughs> paying as much attention as you think they are. Um, that series of release emails tells a story. Hey, the book is out. Oh, look, you know, reviews are coming in. Oh, the rank is really good. Oh, I'm so excited about how well this launch is going. Uh, don't forget the price is going up if you're a person who launches at a lower price to your list. And now, blah, 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 and a little wrap up at the end, like, this launch week went so great. It's a story. They just tell the story. Which kind of answers, whoops, I went the wrong way, which kind of answers the uh, what should be in them question, right? Um, depends on the goal of the automation. We'll talk about goals in a minute, so just put a pin in that. This part, though, do you just write an email and write another one? I mean, you could. Um, if you're going to write a series of books, you could just write a book and then just be like, well, I'm done with that. I guess I should write another one. 
or ahead of time, you could say, this book is gonna be four, this series is gonna be four books long, and here's what I'm gonna do in each one of the books, and here's how they're going to connect to each other, and here's how I'm gonna make sure that the read through is good, and here's the hooks that I'm gonna embed in each of those books that makes people want to close those loops in the follow-up books, and here's how I'm gonna end in a really cool and satisfactory way. What if you read your emails like that? That'd be pretty great too, right? So, we ask then the same questions about our automations that we ask when we're outlining and writing our books. Um, with the caveat, caveat? Cave, is that how you say that? I have a reading vocabulary. You know what I'm, I know you all know what I'm talking about. Um, my oldest daughter does too and she gets really embarrassed about it, but I'm like, that means you read. Never be embarrassed by that. <laughs> like, that's totally fine. Uh, the, the caveat to that is, of course, that your books don't, have a goal in the same sense, in that what you're trying to accomplish with them, I guess, is to make people like them a lot, but you don't have, you're not trying to sell people something, which at its heart, we kind of are trying to do here. So that said, with automations, we're gonna ask a couple of questions, and the first of those is, what is the goal? What is the goal of this entire automation? That's really obvious sometimes if it's a welcome sequence, the goal is to orient them and get them on the list and move them into the main campaign sequence and make sure they know a little something about you and, you know, welcome sequence. You guys all know how to do that. You read Newsletter Ninja. You know what's going on. Right, of course. But other, other sequences have different goals. You've got your win back campaigns. I just recently learned that people call them that and I think it's adorable. Um, what I always called re-engage and purge, which is kind of violent and terrible. So win back, you're gonna win the people back and then gently show them out instead of purging them, which is kind of a horror movie now. Um, so you figure out what is the goal of the automation? What am I trying to accomplish with this specific automation, which informs the decisions you make about how long does it need to be? What do my various hooks have to be? How am I gonna deliver it? Am I delivering freebies with it? A whole host of other things that we'll talk about when we get into the nitty gritty of the emails themselves. But what is the goal of the automation overall? The other thing you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself automation-wide is tags, or actually in mailer light, it would be groups, of course, and I'm not intimately familiar with all of the systems, but you're basically looking at tags, groups, segments, the ways in which you parse out and divide and label your people. When they are coming into or going out of an automation, you need to think about how do you, how do you want to mark them, how do you want to mark them is the best word I can come up with, so that you know what it is that they have, have already gone through and are they in the middle of it. I mark people whenever they come into an automation to say what automation they're in. I mark them when they leave. Um, if you've got something going on in the automation where they click and something different happens, in mail or light you move them into or out of or copy them into a different group, I would tag them at that point. Or I guess you're putting them in a group and that's the tag. Over at Active Campaign, I'd tag them. If you're going to just send them down different paths, you might want to tag them. Advice I gave in Newsletter Ninja, which I still very much stand by, is tag or group in MailerLite way more than you think you need to. Like, it doesn't take you more than a second to just be like, I'm gonna just tag that. And it's so much nicer to think, oh, I kind of would like to know how many people, and just be able to like go look instead of having to reverse engineer it, which in all honesty, you almost always can go back and reverse engineer it, but save yourself some time and tag people. Mm. Those are basically the high level, like the automation level questions that I, that I ask. There's a bunch of other questions, but they get a little bit more granular and they get into each email. But so for the automations, what is the overarching goal of the automation and in what way do I need to mark people so that I can parse them out later if I need to to figure out what automations they've seen and haven't seen and what decisions and choices they made in those emails if that's something that you're tracking. In the emails themselves, I'm gonna ask about goals again. God, I'm annoying. I sound very goal-oriented and I assure you I'm not. Um, and the reason that we're doing that is because as you bring people through the automation, 
the emails do have different goals. If you're doing that welcome email, that first one is maybe just an introduction to you. The second one is maybe just kind of like a discussion of why you love science fiction, why you, you, know, why you decided to write it, because you maybe read several genres, but sci-fi is the one you like write. Um, your favorite authors, again, is a cool thing. Telling people what's gonna happen when they wind up on the main list. I email every month or whatever it is that you do. Each of the emails in that, say, welcome sequence are gonna have a different goal that contributes to that overall goal that we talked about of welcoming them and orienting them to the list. Um, if you're talking about the, uh, the win back sequence, that first one is just the goal of that is to gather people that have been opening, but for some reason it's not showing, so you've identified them as not engaged, so you send that first email that says, hey, you out there? If you are, click here. They click, it shoots them back off to wherever so that they're no longer marked as not engaged, and that was the goal, and that's been accomplished, and that one's over. Your second email, I didn't see that you clicked. If you're reading these emails, hit reply and let me know, because there's you know a snafu somewhere, there's a glitch in the matrix, that's the goal of that one, is to do that last little sweep and catch those few people that for some reason are, it's a super weird situation. And then the goal of the third email is just to let the people know they got booted. Hey, so you're out. And to give them on the, on a, you know, um, re-engage and purge. It sounds so mean. Sequence, I always, uh, the very last email, I always say, if you just wanna know when I have a new book, follow me on Amazon or BookBub. So that on the way out, at least, should they see it, which chances are they're not going to at this point. <laughs> I've kind of established that they're not seeing these, but whatever. Should they see it down the road, follow me on Amazon or BookBub if you don't just wanna know when I have a new book, and it gives them just this one last little way to kind of stay connected to you, and frankly, not to put too fine a point on it, Amazon and BookBub's emails land in the inbox. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but like just reliably right in the inbox, um, which is nice. I don't love it, but it's, it's a fact. So um, anyway, each of those emails has their own little goal, and then they accomplish that, which then ties the whole thing together, and you've met your goal for your automation as a whole. Another question about the emails as you're asking, your, as you're composing them, is you're gonna ask yourself, what's the timing here? What's the delay between emails? Am I gonna deliver the, you know, do the confirmation, drop the cookie on them, and then wait two days and check in, wait five days, send a first email? Um, I email my, I'm not actually saying this, this is hypothetical, I email my list every month, so I guess I'll do my welcome emails seven days apart for three weeks and then drop them on the regular list and you are making these decisions. There's not really any wrong answers to that. I mean, I guess you could send them too frequently or too infrequently, but I honestly don't even know what those metrics would be because it's gonna be really according to your people. This is a really it depends kind of question, but you should think it out ahead of time so that when you start to put the emails into your, you know, into MailerLite say, you don't suddenly go, oh, this automation sequence is like four months long. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Um, maybe I shouldn't have put six weeks between. That's an exaggeration. Also, probably not, <laughs> to be honest. I'm sure somebody has done it. So um, you ask yourself that. What's the timing between these? How often do I want to deliver them? Do I want to build a little cushion in at the end so that they don't maybe finish the onboarding sequence and get my regular campaign 15 minutes later? Because that just happens to be when it went out. Think about things like that. Um, and pay attention to your timing. Opening and closing loops. Again, we're really good at this. This is another place where we've got an advantage over the swamp monsters because we are like, that's what we do, right? I mean, you wrote a tagline for your book, hook. Um, you crafted a first sentence that nobody could possibly tear their eyeballs away from, hook. You guys know how to do this. So what you're doing in your emails is just a little, a smaller version of that where you're, you're just sort of embedding something in their head, making them ask a question, making them want to see the thing that you said you were gonna send next week, uh, something that you promised them. Always promise them something, give them a little preview of what's coming up. That can be really hard in your campaigns because I was gonna say some of you, but the fact is it's me. <laughs> I don't always like, know what I'm gonna send you next time. <laughs> Who the heck knows, I haven't got that planned out. Um, so if I say, hey, next time I'm gonna tell you about whatever, those of you on my ninja list will know that I told you several weeks ago, maybe six, 
weeks ago that I was going to tell you about a cool experiment that I ran with uh, subscribers who haven't confirmed yet. And I haven't. <laughs> because some other stuff kept coming up. So I haven't gotten to that yet. Probably shouldn't have said that. But when you're writing automations, of course, you're just setting them up and they're just going to be done so you know what's happening next. And you can go ahead and you can, you can give, them, give them a little open loop. You can open a box for them. The, uh, the lost guy calls them mystery boxes. Christine, is that what it is? Mystery boxes? I think. At any rate, you open one and then the next time you close it for them, open something different. Um, you can even set these up in such a way that it looks as though you're participating and you're not, which is a very fun, cool ninja trick to do. Um, my steamy romance pen name asks at one point during the onboarding, she shows them uh, three covers for upcoming books. If you know how fast I write, you know how hilarious that is because <laughs> upcoming, eh, I don't know, 2028. Um, but here's the button. You bet your ass I have the book covers for them, as anybody who knows me will tell you. So I got these three book covers and some little like blurbs next to them. What do you think I should do next? None of it um, is what's going to happen. <laughs> what do you think I should do next? And she gets replies. But so what the email says is uh, just hit reply, because you're always trying to get them to open, click, reply, one, two, or hey, all three if you can. Hit reply and let me know which book you think I should do next. And the, rep the replies come in reliably as people trickle in. Or if you do like a book sweeps or whatever and you drop a spreadsheet full of people in, a bunch of replies come in. At the, at, she says, what do, you, what do you want me to write next? Everybody who replies, I'll send you a picture of my inbred cat. I have this, in, her eyes are always crossed and her tongue is always out and she's got like literal pincher claws, like a crab. She's crazy. Um, but I'm obviously not going to answer every one of those emails and send a picture of my cat, even though I'm a big fan of answering emails because it's too many and I would have to do it every day. Um, so in the next email, it's just whatever the content is. I don't even actually remember what the next email is. And then the PS says, I said I would send her a picture of my cat and then I forgot. So here it is. And there's a link to actually a story. It's a page on her website and there's a whole story about her adoption because she was a rescue and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to talk about my cats. If you'd like to hear about my cats, follow me on Facebook. Um, and you'll hear about almost nothing else. So that's not true. I got a dog. So you'll hear, <laughs> you'll hear about her a lot as well. Um, but so that's a, like a, a, just a way that like pulls them from one thing to the next and like acknowledges, oh, we were going to do this cat thing and here she is. And also shows this to the people who didn't reply because she's cute and they should look at her. Um, so just be doing that, opening the things and closing the things. Open something new, close it in the next one until you get to the end, at which point you can feel free to sort of wrap up. We're all done getting to know each other. Now you're going to go off to my main list, however it is that you want to tell it to them. But I am a big fan of sort of acknowledging that they've come to the end of like a, a getting to know you kind of sequence and let them know that they're going to go into a new thing. I just, I don't know. I like to get it, so this is one of those circumstances where I just like that, I guess. CTAs. That's the next thing. That's call to action for anybody who does not know that. Um, you kind of want to have some kind of CTA in like every email. This is part of the getting the click thing. But CTA doesn't mean like that they have to go buy something or that they have to like vote on something or that they have to, it doesn't have to be like a big deal. It can just be like go here and check out this picture of my cat or um, just about anything. But you just want to give them something that they can do in each email. So whether that's something really small, like check out this cool video, or uh, something a little bigger and a little more advantageous to you that's like, check out this you know, novella that's on Amazon and it's only 99 cents and it's related to my books, or however you want to do it. But give them something that you, just, like you want to give them a lot of super clicky links, which I think is one of the items in this list actually. Um, but it's not just the, the clicky links part, but the part where you tell them to do a thing to click on the link, make it a big old button, tell them what you want them to do and why. Click here to follow me on Pinterest so you can see the casting for my cool urban fantasy series, like my fantasy casting. I mean, unless you actually have a film going, in which case you probably should mention that too. Um, <laughs> click here to go to Pinterest to see my fantasy casting for my urban fantasy series. Tell them what to do, tell them why they should do it. You'll notice I told them a way that would benefit them instead of follow me on Pinterest so I have a lot more Pinterest subscribers. 
they're not called subscribers, followers, I guess. Because um, that is a benefit for you if you're a Pinteresty person, but you want to tell them what's in it for them. Anyway, the reason I'm harping on it is you want them to get used to doing the things you tell them to do. So you tell them to do things that are kind of cool and that they might like. Click here for a picture of Jason Momoa. If you're on my steamy pen names list, that's what it's going to be. And off they go, and that's what they get, and they like it. And then they're like, man, she tells me to click stuff, and it's awesome. And so they get a cool thing. That's going to be really different if you write, like, action adventure. That, well, or maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what you people like. But whatever it is, you give them something cool to click on, and they go over and go, oh, this is cool. I do like this. This is a cool video. This is a cool free story from someone. This is a cool whatever. And they start to think, I like it when she sends me things. I like it when he tells me to click on this. I, I, I get a benefit. This person actually sends me cool stuff. Always be the person who sends them cool stuff <laughs> as opposed to the person who like just kind of clutters up their inbox. And then even if they like them, they're kind of like, eh, you know, I read those emails and I didn't really get anything out of it. Be the person who made sure they got something out of it. And just train them that clicking that button is always cool. Anytime I click a button in Tammy's email, there's something cool is what I hear all the time. I mean, nonstop, in my sleep, just all the time. So yeah, links, that was next. Give them links, obviously, that can be one of the things for the CTAs, uh, if you're gonna you know, give them a CTA, it should be to click something. You wanna have something super clicky, something borderline click baby in every email, only because we're trying to do that in every email. And since these are, again, set it and forget it ones, you can think them through really carefully, make sure that it's like really tightly aligned, because maybe, when you're rushing to get that campaign out next week, you're like, I don't have anything super clicky. I don't know what to do. But in, your, in all of your automations and most of your campaigns, you're following this particular best practice. And so it's fine if one campaign you just fall down and you're like, I don't even, I've sent them all the pictures I have of Jason Momoa and I don't know what else to do for them. You can maybe relax, because in your automations, you're nailing this. Clicky links in every single email, really cool CTAs. I don't know, cool gifts. Do people like gifts anymore? I like gifts, but my kids assure me I'm not cool. My daughter makes fun of me, because she's like, you love, you love memes. And I'm, and I'm like, doesn't everyone love memes? Is it really just me, old people? But I guess it is. So give them, give them something cool to click on, and it could be that CTA that we just mentioned. Maybe I could have combined those. This is a really important one for planning. Like, I mean, as far as like planning goes, you could do some of this other stuff on the fly. Probably not the timing part. But the conditional slash next is what I called it, is probably the one that you wanna like really have, maybe make a flow chart. I'm not even kidding. I love a flow chart. <laughs> um, maybe even make a flow chart. Because if you are in a system that will allow you to do this, uh, MailerLite will let you do it, although it's not necessarily as robust as like a ConvertKit or Active Campaign or something. Um, if you're gonna have something during any of these sequences where they're opening, although I do not recommend we go by that anymore, or they're clicking or whatever will um, cause the, the automation to split. If yes, then this, if no, then that, you're gonna need to plan that out ahead of time. And you're gonna need to do it really carefully, <laughs> double check all your work, assume you did it wrong and run yourself through the automation first. It's me, I'm talking about me. Assume you did it wrong and run yourself through the automation first so you can fix it. Um, so those you have to like really be cognizant of. But they are really powerful. So if you are in a system where you have the opportunity to use them, you really should. If Even if only to say they clicked on the big clicky button I gave them, so that down the road, you can say, how is that going? How is it with people clicking on my whatever? And you can, you can look at someone and say, oh, she clicked all the way through the whole thing, or she didn't, or whatever. Then, of course, you can also look at people in aggregate, how many people clicked on these four links in the onboarding, and see who actually did all of that. Um, you can, of course, just look at an individual email, and it'll show you how many people clicked on a specific thing. But if you wanted to like do it in aggregate, be a lot easier if you had people tagged. Um, I do a lot of uh, conditionals that divide people by um, in newsletter ninja. Well, I don't want to tell you all of them because then you'll try to like defeat them. <laughs> I know how you guys work, um, but 
I do parse y'all out um, based on the things that you click on, and that does affect what you see going forward. Now you're all going to go join with a second, second email address, aren't you? And then I'm going to have to pay Active Campaign a lot of money, so don't do that. Um, but that I do. I, what people click on does it does tag them in Active Campaign, and I go through periodically and figure out who's got what tag and what's going on and what the trends look like and decide. There's you can do um, actually you can do it in Mailer Lite too. You can do conditional content in the body of the email. So I'll just like be like only people who this will see this segment and all the people who this will see that segment. Y'all are missing stuff. It's none of it's good, I promise. Um, so, that's actually, that's it. That's what I do. When I'm making automated sequences, these are the questions I ask myself. Um, I do, here, let me just skip ahead here. Here's a list of things which I'm bringing up because obviously the first one is, is my website. Enjoy. Uh, the second one, is a page where you'll be able to see these slides and the slides from Tuesday, if you didn't get a chance to come to Tuesday. Oh, you should watch the video because I think a lot of times my slides don't make a lot of sense without the video. Like, who's gonna, what are you gonna make of that swamp guy if you didn't like actually, hit, like, what's she up to? Whatever, it's Tammy, just let her go. Um, but so if you go to that second address, I think <laughs> right now I actually think it just has an email sign up that says I'll tell you when it's all up there. Because um, I had a little debacle with American Airlines and did not get here on time. Uh, so I did not prepare things as well as I had hoped. But anyway, the third link, newsletterninja.net slash automation dash, that hyphen's important, planner, that is actually, um, there's a Google Sheet and like a PDF. There's a bunch of different versions of it. Um, it's got all the questions we just talked about and then just some other organizational stuff like subject line and are you delivering a freebie and whatever uh, that you may find helpful. You may just be able to, I mean, honestly, from the notes you took today and the slides, you might be fine. But if you'd like a little bit more help and a little bit more structure, um, it will walk you through the whole thing. Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? And it'll be in front of you, all planned out. It does not have a flow chart component, only because I feel like I do my flow charts on the computer, but a lot of people write them down, and it just didn't really work out. But um, it does have every, every like spaces, like fields you can fill in for everything you might want to do. So that might be helpful to you. Um, I also obviously have a Facebook group. I hate Facebook, so if you're all like, I, I'm not going to your Facebook group, I hate Facebook, I get it 100%, I promise. But if you are a Facebook person, there is a group, it is surprisingly called, you know, it's Newsletter Ninja. It's actually called the Newsletter Ninja Author Think Tank. Christine set it up for me, because she's lovely. And she promised I wouldn't have to spend a lot of time there, but I do. <laughs> it's right, because I totally love it. Um, <laughs> But so that is the, the URL anyways, you know, group slash newsletter ninja. You can also just email me. Like, I have an admin who will, like, protect me if anything's too crazy, but she also knows that I like to talk to people and I like to hear what your questions are. Your questions are how I find those pain points. Those, uh, can I just put it in one email? How, what, how do they go together? Those are all, like, real sentences that I've pulled out of, like, Facebook groups when people come in tearing their hair out and like the equivalent of that lady who can't use the blender or whatever and they're like, how do I whatever? There's gotta be a better way. Like that, I, I pull those all the time out of Facebook groups so that I can remember to answer them in emails or in courses or talks like this. So feel free to email me if you have a question. However, if you do have a question and you are a Facebook person, the group is a great place to put it because then we kind of crowdsource answers and all of that kind of business. So it's an awesome place to be. I'm gonna take one more minute, indulge me, because seriously, wherever, I don't know where Damon is, so I can't point, but he's ruining everything. Um, he's not ruining everything, he's the best. But um, I have a new book coming out. It is not about automations, I'm sorry. Um, that was supposed to be the next book, but surprise. Uh, <laughs> life comes at you fast, but you guys are gonna die. Okay, get ready. It's blank. Okay, let's try again. My cover designer is the best. Um, I'm like, it'd be funny if you had a cookie and she's like, you mean like this? I'm like, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> and it's even funnier than I thought it would be. So anyway, my next book is about reader magnets, guys. And you can, it's, it's available for pre-order now. 
Now I'm a swamp monster. Um, but it is. If you go there, it will redirect you to Amazon. And the other thing that I'm doing, and this is all very preliminary, but if you were to go to that address, which I made very user friendly, as you can see, um, by having it be three words, <laughs> it says cookie challenge waitlist, and there's hyphens in between. I'm sorry. Um, I need to get better at this selling thing. I'm doing a reader magnet challenge. I'm going to lead a cohort of people through writing your reader magnets from literally nothing, nothing. Show up with your, an empty head. I will. Show up with your head empty. <laughs> We're going to have uh, beat sheets so that you can figure out how to write your genre in 12,000 words instead of like 70,000 you're used to. We're going to have um, a really cool discount on book covers. So your book cover will be well under $100. You can get like a decent book cover, actually a really nice book cover, um, from 100 covers. You guys have probably heard of them because I know Ryan Z has talked about them. Um, we're going to have a discount from Book Funnel. <clears throat> Damon never discounts anything. Um, ever. And uh, there's going to be like daily accountability and uh, word count things and sprints. And it's going to be really cool. Um, but I don't know a ton about it yet, except for how cool it's going to be. So if you just sign up for the wait list, um, and the wait list does not sign you up to any, like no, like no other newsletter or whatever. It will just give you a notification when that happens. I never sign anybody up to the newsletter unless they want to be. So yeah, that was my self-indulgent nonsense. Uh, and you can find it all there, but not for a little while. <laughs> I mean, there's a page there, but it doesn't say anything yet. Uh, we have like two minutes for questions. Come on up. Does anybody have any questions? People always have a ton of questions about automations. That's my big questions. Oh man, I have to talk. I have to talk so fast to get through all my nonsense. Can you Shoot. save these from myself? Do I need two newsletters, two separate genres that I write in? Can I do it? in one with like a link from, if you're gonna, looking for this author, it's in this part of the newsletter. If you're looking for the other author, it's in that part of the newsletter. Or do I need two separate entities that will make me insane? What are the genres? Mystery. What are the genres? <laughs> mystery, sort of cozy mystery, funny stuff, and paranormal romance that's also got a little funny bit. I think that we all want to fool ourselves that people are going to follow us from genre to genre because of our strong narrative voice and how much they like us as a person. Yeah. Because we all secretly think that we're Nora Roberts, but we're not, is the problem. I feel you because I want to write like five genres. I just can't find any first draft writers. I have like, I'll tell you someday about all the book covers burning up my hard drive. So I get it. Um, but for those, I would probably keep it separate. Um, I also, just as an aside, I don't think that there's any newsletter software that will let you link within the newsletter. Is there? Yeah? Like the anchor links like you would on a web page. OK, see, I don't think I can do that in Active Campaign. So I was like, well, if Active Campaign can't do it, who can? Well, apparently MailChimp. That makes good sense, yeah. So yeah, I think you'd have to separate them, and I'm so sorry, I don't want to tell you that, because ugh, who wants to do that? Shoot. What are your thoughts on uh, pictures and images and email? I got into a discussion with a fellow author about how he was, his, uh, his uh, take was not too many pictures because it might put the email into the social uh, section of their inbox, or I mean, do you think it just depends, or do you think it's better to have more images to draw people in? I love an image-heavy newsletter. I kind of want my newsletters to look like, like magazines. <laughs> like that's really the kind of thing I like. Maybe because I'm an old lady. Um, I do try to keep it to a minimum, only because it will. The more images you have, the more likely you get a ding, and it puts you ever closer to the dreaded promotions tab, or God forbid, spam. Um, one way that I solve that for myself is that I tend to make emails I like, and then every third, fourth, fifth email, I'll just send something that's super stripped down. Literally just a text, maybe not like plain text, like the HTML plain text, plain text thing, but something that doesn't have any pictures or a bunch of links or whatever that's just like an email you might send to a buddy. Um, 
so I'll vary it some because um, I just really don't like just plain, plain emails. But your fellow author is correct that every one of them will kind of weigh against you. So make sure if you do want to have the ability to kind of throw things in because they're fun, that you're following like every other best practice, not having spammy words. Send your emails to, uh, what is it, email tool tester. If you Google, there's several of them. Um, and they'll give you like a spam rating so you know if you need to change something before you actually hit send on it. Just test them out. Really, really best practices. And then you can be like, I'm going to include this animated GIF or GIF, however you say that. <laughs> Great. Thank okay. you. Hey. Hi. So, um, so because of your book following a step-by-step, -step, so plug for you here, I went from 12% to 47% open rate plus. And that's before Apple changed things. But <laughs> okay. I have a... I have a bad habit of tweaking things on the, on, the, on the minor level. So I'll go through each individual email in my automation, and one of them has like a 5% unsubscribe. But with my overall rates, when do I stop tweaking? Because I'm kind of afraid to tweak things in the wrong direction. I'm the wrong person to ask, because like, I never stop. Um, oh, I'm really the wrong person to ask. I think that if you're starting to say, I think this might be a bit much, maybe that's where you stop. <laughs> like maybe it's actually, you're like, oh, am I getting out of control here? Maybe. Um, and that might be the place to stop. But honestly, what you're doing, let's reframe it and call it optimizing. The optimizing never ends. Keep doing it. Um, if you're not happy with the unsubscribe rate, then say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to get that down to 0.5. Just go for it. Um, however, I'm the newsletter ninja, so I'm like, yes, optimize your newsletter at all costs. You're also an author, I assume, and some yes. authors actually write books, unlike me. So you always have to ask yourself, would I be better off writing? Right. You got to decide on that trade-off. That's a decision only you can make, but maybe like you do the newsletter tweaking when you're watching Netflix, and so it doesn't interrupt your writing time. Make sure that you're not, not producing books because you're optimizing. It's very easy to fool yourself that you're working when you're doing something that isn't words. It, it's me. I'm talking about me. Um, so don't do that. But I don't think there's any point at which you should stop until you have no unsubscribes ever, okay. and you have 100% open rate. Right. And then you'd be like, cool, I'm going to rest on my laurels for a little bit. Right. Thank you. Appreciate no problem. It. Hi, hi. Hello. Um, so if you've got one, how do, you, how do you convert all your current people from one newsletter uh, company to another? Oh, it's actually a lot easier than people want you to think it is. I mean, it can be fiddly if you have a lot of automations or a lot of like segments or tags yeah. or whatever. It can be fussy. It's all like one list. Uh, then you, so e I mean, like really, if you've got like just one big list of people, you literally just export that list of people mm -hmm. and then you import them at the new place. Here's the caveat. Okay. I love saying that word today. Um, the caveat with that is that when you move, you don't have any reputation with the new sender. Okay. Um, so if you okay. move. 10,000 people from MailChimp to MailerLite, and then you try to send 10,000 people an email from MailerLite, first of all, MailerLite's going to be like, I don't know, man. <laughs> um, and they'll probably hold some of them back, or they'll do some, don't do it on release day is all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> Make sure it's an email that doesn't matter a lot. Right. That's that first email. But it's actually better to warm them up a little bit. And when I'm in charge of moving, like for myself or for a client, I usually move them in segments. So I'll move like a couple thousand, and then you got to send two emails for a little while as you gradually move them over. But it warms up the new server so that you're not just hitting them with a big whack of people all at once. Okay. Again, that's a little fiddly, but it's not hard by any means. It just means you have to actually be careful with how you're doing your exports and imports. So you be, as you're doing that, you're doing two campaigns, one from each Yeah, one. you do have to, send the, you have to send duplicate campaigns for a little bit, just depending on how big your list is. But it's not, I mean, it's not a huge deal because you can just copy and paste usually. Oh, then you should, can probably just move it all at once. If it's under like a couple thousand people, you can probably just move them and go. I wouldn't worry too much. It's very easy. Don't let anyone scare you. I think they try to scare you so you don't move. <laughs> it's, not, it's genuinely not hard. So just do it. Go to MailerLite. I'm just saying. If you're on MailChimp. Anything else? Anybody else? Nope, she's leaving. Everybody stare. She probably has a panel to get to, because I do go on. 